that is the reason why we are going to study the core line phi so here uh, the uh, major concern of uh, core line phi the major concern of core line phi is impact the uh, destruction of the flora and fauna uh, there will be air pollution because of the mine fire there will be economical loss because of the mine fire there will be social impacts also it not only it not only affects the livelihood of workers working in the mines but also the people residing nearby the mine it creates an environment of fear in the society okay so these are the impacts of coal mine fire the coal mine fire causes massive destruction of the affected area it has got social impact economical impact ecological impact so that is why we are very much concerned about the coal mine fire because the coal mine fire is the very oldest problem associated with mining industry so coal seam fire is the greatest challenge faced by the mining industry and coal mine fire are a serious health and safety hazard also therefore the uh, coal mine fire can be defined as underground smoldering of a coal deposit upon in a coal mine so uh, that is the thing which we are going to discuss in this class why should we be concerned about the coal mine figure big coal mine fire because it has got air pollution it has got economical loss it has got social impacts then what is the cause of mine fire what is the cause behind mine fire so in the previous class we have discussed about the different theories of coal mine fire like your uh, uh, coal of oxygen complex theory and uh, the pyrite theory and other bacterial theory and other theories of uh, the coal mine fire we have discussed in the previous class so what is the cause why the coal mine fire is taking place what is the cause behind coal mine fire the origin of coal mine fire fires in mine men be initiated due to various reasons there are various reasons uh, uh, for which there is coal mine fire so fires in mine may be initiated due to various reasons it may be of exogenous origin or endogenous origin so uh, it the cause of the coal mine fire may be due to exogenous origin or due to endogenous origin what is exogenous origin the exogenous fire the fire is ignited from an external source of energy if the fire has taken place because of an external source of energy then we call it exogenous fire upon flames from explosion due to short firing operations can cause the exogenous fire fire in conveyor belt due to frictional heating ignition of the electrical equipment due to sparking so these are all related to exogenous fire exogenous fire then what is endogenous fire the fire which is caused due to spontaneous heating of coal is called the endogenous fire the fire which is caused due to spontaneous heating phenomena of the fuel or the material concerned coal in this case so endogenous fire is nothing but due to the spontaneous heating of coal 
it is the major cause of coal mine fire the major cause of coal mine fire is spontaneous heating of coal so the serious threat to mining industry is your spontaneous heating the serious threat to mining industry is your spontaneous heating of coal so the main cause behind the greatest problem of mining industry which turned tons of coal into ashes every day huge amount of coal is burning converting coal into ashes more than 75% of mine fire are caused due to the spontaneous heating of coal the process what is spontaneous heating of coal the process of self heating of coal is called the spontaneous heating of coal the process of self heating of coal or other carbonaceous material resulting eventually in its ignition without the application of external heat is termed as spontaneous combustion or spontaneous heating of coal what is spontaneous heating of coal the process of self heating of coal or other carbonaceous material resulting eventually in its ignition without the application of external heat is termed as spontaneous combustion or spontaneous heating of coal it is generally takes place the spontaneous heating of coal takes place in gobs but can also develop inside in sides of coal pillars and roof and floor strata of a, of certain coal seams and coal stocks coal stock piles also sometimes catch fire what are the factors which lead to spontaneous heating of coal what are the different factors which leads to the spontaneous heating of coal there are we have uh, in the previous class we have also discussed different factors like your uh, intrinsic properties of coal and extrinsic properties uh, two factors are the intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors so the uh, major factors are mining aspects which influence heating mining aspects which influence heating presence of pyrites in coal if pyrite is present in coal so according to the pyrite theory so the spontaneous heating of coal takes place presence of pyrites in coal which leads to oxidation of coal in the previous class we have discussed the pyrite theory if there is pyrite so there is a phenomena which takes place according to the pyrite theory relative humidity is also a factor of spontaneous heating of coal sorption of water vapor in the coal presence of water vapor in the coal moisture content of the coal is a cause of spontaneous heating of coal also and there are bacterial action is also there according to the bacterium theory we have discussed in the previous class the bacterial action also leads to spontaneous heating of coal so mining aspects presence of pyrites relative humidity and moisture content of the coal bacterial action leads to spontaneous heating of coal apart from this the oxidation of carbonaceous matter is the prime reason responsible for spontaneous heating of coal so presence of carbonaceous matter carbon uh, is the main reason main factor responsible for spontaneous heating of coal so the study of mine fires are different mines study of mine fires are different mines so in dhori kalyari mine fire in dhori kalyari we have discussed in the previous classes what happened in dhori kalyari mine fire bokaru and ramgarh mines limited dhanbad bihar in the year 1965 
Dori Kaleri mine fire took place. The cause of mine fire was the resin band. One of the biggest disaster in mining industry was the increase in the amount of methane gas. But the resin behind the ignition was the hurricane lantern carried by the worker. In those days, in 1965, people used to carry the um, hurricane lantern to light the underground environment which caused the Dhori Kaliyari mine fire. But if, what is the outcome of the Dhori Kaliyari mine fire? The disaster led to the death of around 265 people died. 265 people died in Dhori Kaliyari mine fire. That is the outcome of the mine fire. Then in Sudam D. Kaliyari mine fire, which occurred in the year 1976. The main cause of Sudam Kaleri mine fire was it took place due to the accumulation of large amount of gas, methane gas. There was no clue about the reason for ignition, but the main reason is accumulation of huge amount of methane gas inside the mine uh, created the Sudam D. Kaleri mine fire. The outcome of the coal mine fire in Sudam D, 43 people lost their life in the fire. So this is the reason why we are going to study about the coal mine fire. So this, uh, uh, because of this, this reason, throughout the world, there is research going on on mine fire. Mine fire research of United States of America so the mine fire research of United States reveals that most of the mine fires in US were outcome of flame cutting, welding operations, and frictional heating. In United States of America, out of their research, they have found that the main cause of coal mine fire is flame cutting, welding operations, and frictional heating. During the time period from 1990 to 2007, there were 1,601 reportable fires that occurred in the United States of America mining industry. An average of 89 coal mine fires per year. The leading causes of United States mine fires include flame cutting, welding operations, frictional heating, and ignitions, electrical short circuiting, mobile equipment malfunctions, and spontaneous heating of coal. So these are the various regions they have found out from the coal mine research conducted in United States of America. You just imagine uh, during 1990 to 2007, there were 1,601 reportable fires. Means every year there were 89 coal mine fires occurring in United States of America. Okay, so this is the graphical analysis of causes of coal mine fire in India. So the major cause of coal mine fire is spontaneous heating of coal in the underground spontaneous heating of coal in the open cast mines, spontaneous heating of coal on the surface, higher in quarry from other causes other than spontaneous heating, outbreak of fire in the underground from cause other than spontaneous heating, outbreak of fire on surface from the cause other than spontaneous heating. So how to deal with fire? So if the coal mine fire is there, how to deal with it? Detection. We have uh, discussed in the previous class how to detect the coal mine fire. So there are um, various methods of detection is there. We have discussed by human sense, by using thermal devices, you can detect the coal mine fire. So how to detect? Earlier, a fire is detected easier, it is to deal with. If you detect the fire very early stage, then it will be easier for you to deal with it. 
the development of heating in a go is generally accompanied by the progressive appearance of hedge, hedgy atmosphere, sweating of the strata, gob stink or fire stink. These things we have discussed in the previous class also. There will be sound, there will be smoke and fire. If there is fire, there will be smoke. Though all these stages may not always be observed, therefore, may technological advancement and detection appliances are being improved. So these are human sense. By your human sense, you can see the hedgy atmosphere. You can feel the sweating of the strata. You can smell the gob sting or fire sting. You can hear the sound. You can see the smoke and fire. So these are the old method of uh, detecting the coal mine fire by human sense. But nowadays, there are detecting instruments are available. Instruments, thermal devices are available uh, by the help of which you can detect the fire. So fire alarm systems are there. If any fire is there, the instrument will give you the alarm. So these devices are based on following phenomena. Energy changes occurring in the system by using the flame detector, by temperature measuring devices, you can know the presence of fire, fire detectors like flame detector, temperature measuring devices. Okay. Material degradation of the affected fuel like smoke detectors, like product of combustion measuring devices, measuring the percentage of carbon monoxide, percentage of carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide detector, carbon dioxide detector, methane detector, different type of machines are available by the which, by the help of which you can detect the presence of fire in the mines. And uh, after measuring the various gases, like your carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, you can calculate the various ratios, grams ratio and uh, uh, other ratios you can calculate from where you can know the presence of uh, a fire inside the mine. What is the basic principle to stop a fire? The basic principle, what is the basic principle to stop a mine fire? The following three things are essential for the sustenance of any type of fire. Availability of fuel, fuel triangle, means here uh, fire triangle, fuel, oxygen, heat. Availability of heat, necessary supply of oxygen, adequate quantity of heat. So if you withdraw the fuel or we withdraw the oxygen or you remove the heat, so there will be no fire. So withdrawal of any of these would lead to collapse of the fire. For these to happen, a number of methods are being adopted. Okay. Methods of extinguishing coal mine fire. How to extinguish the coal mine fire? By using chemical extinguisher, different types of fire extinguishing devices are there. Various types of fire extinguishing uh, devices are there. So by the, using the fire extinguishers, you can uh, extinguish the fire. Like using chemical extinguishers, by application of water, you can extinguish the fire. By infusion of slurry, solid in not to the atmosphere, you can extinguish the fire, gel infusion, inert gas infusion, loading out of fire, and sealing of the fire. So these are the methods of extinguishing the coal mine fire. So what is the outcome of the study? So in the in this outcome, mine fire is nothing but 
the burning of coal seams beneath the earth crust, which have hazardous consequences. The main reason behind the occurrence of coal mine fire in India is spontaneous heating, while in United States it is mainly due to frictional heating. Developed detecting devices have made detection very easy. Detect, detection of coal mine fire. Many times it is successfully detected, but it is the negligence of the employees which results in severe disaster. So uh, if you detect the fire, if you remove the oxygen, if you remove the oxygen through various chemicals and by the sealing of the mine fire, the fire can be extinguished. Water for removal of heat, latent heat of water is 539 calorie per gram. Removal of the hot combustible mass or the fuel. Advancement in technology is required for the application of these methods. So these are the various means by the help of which you can control the coal mine fire. So the coal mine fire we have uh, discussed in great detail in the previous classes and the spontaneous combustion of coal also we have discussed where a lot of uh, study are done uh, the, to control the coal mine fire. So this we have already discussed in the Indian scenario, mechanism of spontaneous heating of coal and theories of spontaneous heating of coal like your coal oxygen complex theory, pyrite theory, bacterium theory, phenol theory, electrochemical theory. These theories we have already discussed. So you please go through all these steps. There are four steps of the fire first step, second step, third step, fourth step. And these are the sequential stages in spontaneous heating of coal. And uh, this is the pyrite, uh, this is the pyrite theory, uh, presence of pyrite, pure pyrite. So polysulfide of iron, FES, FES. So this is the reaction of sulfur with oxygen and water molecule. This is the bacterium theory. This is the phenol theory, this is the electrochemical theory. Uh, we have also discussed about the factors affecting the spontaneous combustion of food, intrinsic factors, extrinsic factors. These are the different factors responsible for the coal mine fire. Uh, then your uh, <coughs> presence of pyrite, area of exposed coal surface, all these things are already covered in the previous classes. So these are the different factors. And uh, we have also discussed about the mining factors, mining methods, multi seam working, rate of hard burns, pillar size, regulators, roads, doors, stoppings and air crossings, ventilation doors, stoppings, obstruction in roads, ventilation, air flow rates, and uh, different uh, set of mining conditions influencing spontaneous combustion of coal we have discussed. All these factors are responsible for spontaneous heating of coal. And we have also studied about these stages. We have also studied stages of spontaneous combustion, incubation period, what is incubation period, what is indication period, what is open fire, how to detect spontaneous sitting of coal, detection of spontaneous sitting of coal. And there are essentially three classes of detection, early detection of physical symptoms through the human sense, conducting thermal survey using thermal devices, monitoring gas concentrations in return airways and sealed off area. Then early detection of physical symptoms through the human senses. This we also discussed. Gob sting, what is gob sting, what is fire sting, what is hedge, and what is sweating of the strata, what is sound, 
smoke in the airway what are the limitations of human sense what is the limitations of human sense and all these things we have discussed and conducting thermal survey conducting thermal survey using thermal devices to detect the coal mine fires and uh, monitoring gas concentrations in return air waves and sealed off areas and their trend analysis like here fire indices we have discussed graham's ratio young's ratio willett's ratio jones and cricket ratio oxides of carbon ratio all these things we have discussed then uh, what is oxygen deficiency how to calculate the graham's ratio how to uh, calculate the other uh, what are the drop what are the drop acts of graham's ratio and what is young's ratio what is willett's ratio how to calculate willett ratio what is jones and cricket ratio how to calculate the jones and cricket ratio and what are the oxides of carbon carbon monoxide carbon dioxide c by h ratio so all these things we have discussed in the previous class so how to prevent the spontaneous combustion of so prevention of spontaneous heating of prevention is key so prevention of spontaneous combustion is based on two factors elimination of coal from the area you eliminate the coal from the area or control the ventilation reduce uh, means see to exclude oxygen entirely from the area remove oxygen by controlling the ventilation to supply a sufficient flow of air to dissipate the heat efficiently as it is generated and before a critical temperature is reached so how to control or how, what preventive measures you should take so that uh, you can control the coal mine fire one thing is you can eliminate the coal from the area fuel remove the fuel second remove oxygen by following control ventilation system and uh, uh, supply sufficient flow of air to dissipate the heat because in there is fire means three elements are there in a fire three elements are there in a fire like your uh, uh, fire uh, takes place because of uh, oxygen because of fuel because of heat so if you remove the fuel coal in this case coal if you remove the coal so there will be no fire if you remove the oxygen there is no fire if you remove the heat there is no fire so how, so by following proper ventilation system so you uh, remove the oxygen from the area and this also um, uh, supply fresh air to the mine so that the heat will be dissipated then only the fire can be eliminated so these are the three methods of uh, controlling the fire Se several methods and strategies which can be adopted to prevent and control spontaneous combustion of coal which is given below mining layout proper mining layout design proper mine layout design is very important for prevention of spontaneous heating of coal proper mine layout design of general mine layout should be simple so that each area section can be quickly and effectively sealed up or isolated at short notice without affecting production in other districts panel system of working should be there appropriate for mining seams level to spontaneous heating which facilitates effective sealing with a few stoppings panels uh, must be laid so as to minimize severe crossing of coal during the extraction stage so first thing is mining layout proper mining layout proper panel system of working 
proper design of general mine layout can reduce the spontaneous sitting problem in your mining area. And uh, the size of each panel should be based on the incubation period of coal so that the panel can be extracted before the coal reaches the incubation period. And you should devise, you should divide your rate of our of extraction. Rate of extraction should be increased so that the coal can be taken out quickly before the incubation period of the coal. Panels must be of a size which would permit complete extraction within the incubation period of the coal. So the panel size should be such that you can extract the coal within the incubation period of the coal. The size of the panel barriers needs to be sufficient for stability purpose. Size of the panel barriers needs to be sufficient for stability purpose. Panels with independent ventilation system should be formed. When a working seams by board and pillar method of mining, the size and shape of the pillars must be sufficient to avoid excessive crossing at the edges of the pillars and corners of the pillars. Side bolts can be used and low viscosity grouts may be injected to maintain the integrity of the pillars. In case of long wall mining, face lengths smaller than 60 to 65 meter should not be made to ensure good closure and compaction of the board. Then second method of uh, controlling the coal mine fire is coal winning mining. Probability of spontaneous combustion of coal can be reduced by minimizing the amount of coal, timber, paper, oily reacts, or other combustible materials left in the gob areas. The coal should be won as completely as practicable, especially in disturbed zones, thick seams, and strongly folded steep seams. Efficient clearance of the fragmented coal from the face and good housekeeping should be practiced in the mines that have a history of spontaneous combustion of coal. A high rate of extraction should be adopted to prevent the fire due to spontaneous heating of coal. The advance or retreat method of mining of a coal face should never be interrupted. If any local fall of a roof is there or a fault zone is encountered, immediate steps should be taken to get over the obstacle or reduce its effect on the face advance. It is essential ending order of extraction when mining multiple coal seams. When winning a group of seams, the workings in an upper seam should be in advance of those of lower seams and the coal of the upper seam should be extracted as complete as practicable. In case of long wall working, in case of long wall working, retreating long wall method should be preferred as it eliminates leakage currents through the go area due to large difference in ventilation pressure. In case of long wall advancing, the gate side packs should be made airtight. On completion of production from a panel, reclamation of material should be completed without delay and the panel adequately sealed up as quickly as possible so that the area will be free from the presence of oxygen. Oxygen should not be allowed in the sealed up area. Ventilation and air leakage control should be there. So you know you have studied the ventilation system in the mines. So there should not be any air leakage 
in the ventilation system. The points which should be considered for ventilation and leakage control to prevent spontaneous heating are as follows. The layout of the ventilation network should be designed to minimize pressure differentials between adjoining airways and cross caved areas. Branch in resistances in the surrounding ventilation network should be kept as low as practicable by means of larger cross sections or driving parallel entries. Furthermore, obstructions in those area airways should be avoided. All active mine workings and roadways in a coal mine should be adequately ventilated and unused roadways should be sealed up. Ventilation pressure should not be unduly high so that air leakage through cross pillars or defective stoppings or seals of sealed up areas does not take place and the ventilation doors, ventilation stoppings, ventilation regulators should be properly sited. Unnecessary stoppings and starting of unnecessary stopping and starting of main and booster fans should be avoided. Short circuiting of air as well as its uncontrolled circulation must be eliminated. As far as practicable, the formation of leakage paths should be minimized by providing adequately sized pillars and good gate side facts. If this is not sufficient to prevent air leakage, leakage paths should be sealed off by sealant coating or injection. Air leakage into sealed off areas through fractures extending from the surface should be prevented by artificial sealing using sand. When a panel has caused or seized, when a panel has seized production and is to be sealed up, the ventilation pressure difference should be balanced across the whole panel. Then D, fourth one is the inhibitors. In storage areas where coal is stocked, and surface stockpiles, certain chemical agents can be applied to the coal surface to hinder the penetration of oxygen into the coal by sealing the surface pores and thereby stopping, thereby stopping initiation of auto oxidation of coal at ambient temperature. So on the coal stockpiles, on the surface of the coal stockpile, certain chemical agents can be applied over the surface to hinder the penetration of oxygen. You should not allow oxygen to penetrate to the core into core by sealing the surface pores and by thereby stopping initiation of auto oxidation of coal at ambient temperature. Stock piles should be properly designed to reduce air movement through them. Stockpiles should be properly designed to reduce air movement through them. Surface stockpiles can also be sealed up by consolidation and bitumen. Then your inspection. Last one is the inspection. Every working place in the underground should be inspected by a supervisory staff, by a supervisor by an official or competent person, ventilation officer, at least once during each working shift. During the inspection, attention should be paid to the presence of and means of eliminating fire risk arising from spontaneous combustion of coal and other causes of fire. On ideal days, all districts Level to, level to spontaneous sitting should be inspected at least once by competent persons. So these are the things 
you have to do to control the coal mine fire. So we have discussed in great detail about the various causes of spontaneous combustion of coal, the theory of spontaneous combustion of coal, the detection of spontaneous heating of coal, and how to eliminate the spontaneous heating of coal. So all these things are very, very important for all of you. Please go through all these materials so that you will understand what is spontaneous heating of coal, what is auto oxidation tendency of coal. So this is all about today's class. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.